Welcome back, I'm Tedward and I'm here at the Lars Anderson Auto Museum, the oldest car collection in the United States, in Brookline, Massachusetts, to drive this 1967 Fiat 500. And before we get started, this car could be yours. This car is up for raffle. There are 500 tickets at $100 a piece, giving you a one in 500 chance to be the proud owner of this Fiat 500. So check the links below to go support the Lars Anderson Auto Museum with this raffle and potentially walk away with this awesome little city car. This is the F or Berlina version of the vehicle, which means that it doesn't have suicide doors. Anything pre-65 would have the suicide doors, but this standard normal doors. But there's nothing standard or normal about this car in 2021 because it is absolutely tiny and it only weighs 1,100 pounds. So if you want to go car flipping, you could make your life a lot easier if your neighbors drive Fiat 500s. The 500 is named after its engine size, about 500 cc's, and it is a two-cylinder air-cooled engine that makes about 17 horsepower and only about 20 pound-feet of torque. You can tell how little it is back here, but the cutest thing about it is this distributor with only three wires coming out of it. That is so neat. I love this thing. It is hilariously fun to drive, and it is rear engine hanging just beyond this rear axle, and probably the most adorable tires I will ever drive. It's a 125 R12, just a 12-inch wheel. Hilarious and fun, and the coolest thing about it, too, is when you look at it from this, yes, positive camber. The exhaust is just a little pea shooter and looks adorable as the rest of the car. Oddly enough, this was a family car. This was designed to be kind of the people's car of Italy. This allowed people to get around after the war. And Fiat built almost 4 million of these. I think there's 3.8 or 3.9 million of these that were built. So these are out there. People definitely know the Fiat 500. So let's open the frunk because we've got a little space up here as well. Under the hood, we've got a nice little gas tank, which I'm sure goes quite a long way because this should get somewhere between 40 and 50 miles per gallon with its small motor. But uh, yeah, let's close it up and go for a ride. To prove that it's a family car, I'm going to jump in the back for a second. I've never been in the back of an old 500. And oddly enough, this seems more comfortable than some more modern 911 rear seats. This wouldn't be that terrible, although I am saying that having not been actually driven in it. So let's jump up in the driver's seat and take a ride in this little gem. And the startup procedure, quite strange. We've got a pretty traditional four-speed manual here, reverse, you push it down and over and you're good to go. But our pedal setup is great. There's plenty of room for your feet to make it between each pedal and our throttle way down here. But to start the car, we've got our key front and center. And then down here, we've got a choke and a starter right here. So we can choke it up a little bit. I have driven it just a touch, so it probably doesn't need full choke. We'll clutch in, good neutral, and here's the starter. And that is all of that two-cylinder glory. And it's a four-stroke. We're not dealing with some prehistoric two-stroke. Pretty standard e-brake, works nicely. And let's emerge from the grass over here. We want to go really slow over the bumps because we've only got 12 inch tires. There's a little bunny. I don't think we could chase him down in this. Oh, there's more. Oh, yikes. We might actually murder a bunny on the way. Huh. The two cutest things coinciding in a terrible way. We're in first, let's, off we go. All 1,100 pounds of it. Take it on some bouncy roads up here. Let's get her into second gear. Gotta be careful with the potholes up here because my goodness, they are the size of the vehicle. And coming to a stop, you're not gonna wanna just start shoving it into first. I think, you know, you're gonna wanna be at a full stop before you think about moving it in. There's not like delicious modern synchros. There could be synchros, but they're a little crunchy. All right. That's 
it's all right. Brakes are positive, they actually work really nicely. Four wheel drums, not something I'm too unfamiliar with just because of all the speedsters I've done, but my goodness, this is not a Porsche, that's for sure. 17 horsepower, you're not gonna wanna make any power moves here, you know? You want traffic to be on its way. All right, off we go. Sorry, Rav4, we're gonna slow you down. Patient shifts. accidentally go out to any main busy roads. I'm not really prepared to drive Route 9 in an original 17 horsepower Fiat 500. That's not a good idea. I have limits. Let's go down here. Blinker would have been lovely from him. There's really no information given to me about the car. I don't have oil temperature. I don't have oil pressure. All I have is a fairly active speedometer letting me know. Now in second gear, going up this hill, I'm giving it the beans. That's all she's got. That's it, man. the insanity and the crazy things I've driven, I don't know why these little ones are the ones I want the most. Wide open. Look at that. Nice and a third. As long as we don't have to climb any big hills, we'll be just fine the way we are. Oh yeah. That's motoring. The thin wheel, I feel like I just have all the feedback in the world coming from the front end of the car. There's a single leaf spring across the front there. It is hysterical. I don't know what that was. Not going for the downshift. I'm not going for the downshift. We're gonna crunch. Let's just see what she'll do. Woo! Uh-oh, uh-oh. I think we need second. We're just gonna climb our way out. Gonna move over gently, yield to faster traffic. There we go. I was afraid if I went for second there, I wasn't gonna make it. And then I'm just gonna end up static in the center of the street. Not the place you wanna be in a little car. about NBH. I mean, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. Every bump in the road is a little frightening. What a great city car, though. If you really did just live in the city, this would be perfect. You want to hear the horn? Ready? That's fantastic. I'm not going for fourth. I don't think we need it in this scenario. We're okay. We're okay. There's a guy locally who collects a lot of micro cars. This certainly wouldn't be the smallest of what he owns, but I totally get the appeal. This is hysterically fun to drive. And look how little we are. Oh, we're just so little. There we go. Can 
you imagine putting your whole family in here and, and, and going to the shops, going to the store, going out for a nice picnic or the beach or something? I mean, this is real Italian motoring. I know we think about Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all this stuff, but that's exclusive. That's not for the commoners. This is real Italian motoring. This is what, this is what your Italian family would have actually experienced if they drove cars in Italy without a lot of money. We're gonna let this gentleman go. You go ahead. I'm gonna take my time. Find my way. Oh Back to the Lars Anderson Auto Museum, home of Boston Cars and Coffee, by the way. Wow, what an experience. I am so thankful to be able to drive cars like this. Let's bring it up here to the front of the museum and we'll let it cool off for a bit in order for them to wheel it back into the show. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is actually on display right now. So if you want to win this car and you want to see this car, just come down. Let's see if we can get this. Is that reverse? Let's find out. Promising, good stuff. If you want to see this car, you want to see it at the exhibit, just come down, visit the museum, buy your raffle ticket either here or online and you'll be good to go. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'm thrilled that there's an audience for strange cars, that there's an audience for the odd things in life. Let's cut the motor. Oh, so cool. And even though this isn't the fastest thing, it is the cutest thing. And as auto enthusiasts, I think we need to be well-rounded. So even if you're a hot rod guy or an exotic car guy or something, you can't deny that it's fun to drive around on 12 inch wheels with 17 horsepower. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. And on a hot day like today, you can pop this roof back as well to open it up to the elements. Sort of like a big fabric sunroof.